Honey, I'm home. Let's bring any washing up liquor. Hey, shove a broom up my ass, and then I can sweep the floors as I go along. So, did you get a chance to look at this? No. I've spent weeks getting in with Callard, and now we're after some posh twat. No, no, I haven't looked at it. Idris really wants us to pursue it. I'm sure he does. It would be a major result to get the both of them. For Reese's career, maybe. Aren't you a tiny bit curious what Garvey was doing around at Levine's gallery? Maybe they've got a shared passion for modern art. Collard selling dead bodies in formaldehyde. So you put that together. You go. Very, very fit. Thorough. How come Collard's never mentioned Garvey to you? He's never mentioned his mother, but I'm assuming he's got one. Any ideas as to how you might get in with Garvey? Thought I might stay as a guest in this hotel and go for a couple of weeks. Murph, Reese is sticking his neck out on this one. He's gonna stick his neck up his arse for a liquor. You don't mean that. Do you know the feeling when you've been driving in the motorway and you can't remember the last ten minutes? I can't remember the last ten weeks. You spent months getting an undercover officer in with Callard. A, a, a target I know you've been after for a long time now. And you get him with his hands all over the three quarters of a million pounds worth of fake heroes. It was only good enough to put him inside for five, maybe six years. He'd be out again in three. If I'd offered you that two months ago, you'd have jumped in it. Two months ago, we didn't know he was going to lead us to Garvey. I went to his hotel in St Ives with my husband. It was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. At 500 pounds a night, so it should be. Garvey's helped raise millions for children's charities. Harold Shipman had a Blue Peter badge. Oh, Stephen. Look, he's one of the most reputable businessmen in this country, and you think he's, what, increasing his cash flow with some dodgy euros? His business must be worth ten times that. I don't know what he's doing. I just know it's almost certainly illegal. On what evidence? Good old-fashioned hunch, isn't it? You and I both know that sometimes that's all we ever have. An instinct that something is not right. And if you're not right? I need facilities on Garvey's phones. You may get one on his landline. I wouldn't hold that for a mobile facility. A word with the Home Office. You're risking a great deal here, Stephen. No! Oh! Where's Murph? He's on his way. You spoke to him? Okay, everyone, let's uh, get round. Come on, quick as you can. Right, I've drafted in DC Claire Leadham to help with some of the background on Garvey. Hi. Welcome. Okay, off you go, Claire. Thank you, sir. George Garvey. In the 1970s, using his family's investments and contacts, Garvey began to import colonial and oriental treasures specialising in rugs, antique furniture from all over the world. He became very well known for his flair for design and had a significant impact on what people were putting in their own homes. In 1989, he formed the Ergo Company and opened his first of many prestigious hotels in Holland Park. It was the original hip hotel. It kick-started the current trend for small, offbeat hotels, where the interior designs are cutting edge. Claire, yeah, this is an investigation, not an episode of This Is Your Life. Look. Callard and Garvey operate in totally separate worlds. We know a great deal about Callard, but how do we get to Garvey? I can read the menu from one of his restaurants, but it doesn't tell me what the man likes to eat when no one's looking.
Daddy McHale. Who wants to know? Three years ago, Garvey's wife filed for divorce, citing persistent infidelity and mental cruelty. How much did she get? 4.6 million in the house in Scotland, where she now lives with her daughter. What about the son? Scott. You know him? Yeah, three months ago, whilst under the influence of drugs, Scott was involved in a hit and run. A week before the trial, the key witness suddenly pulled out. Or your case? It came across my desk. And what, you think Callard had something to do with that? When Callard battered that policeman to death, he managed to silence at least 20 witnesses. They found enough cocaine in the car to charge him with intent to supply. The judge ordered that he be sent to rehab. Yeah, but isn't he a big fish in the dealing world? Well, mainly amongst his rich friends. They're very much the recreational crowd. He owes me money. Join the queue. I have a proposition for you. What are you talking about? I intend to get my money back. Got nothing to do with me. How much does he owe you? 20k. 10% will get it back. Two grand, nothing less. But what have we got between Callard and Garvey? Callard's building company? Any links? None that we can establish. I know we're looking at the criminal link between Garvey and Callard, but I wonder if we should look more at the relationship between George Garvey and Barry Levine. Well, George Garvey's been importing artifacts for years. Levine's an art and antiques dealer, and he's not exactly straight. But how do we think Callard might fit in? They were there together at Barry Levine's for a reason, and I want to know what that reason is. Where the hell is Murphy? Present the interest of Eddie McHale. Look, mate, I don't have the money. You're a Garvey, aren't you? What's that got to do with anything? Well, your family's not exactly in the breadline. You think my father's gonna cough up? Yes. Piss off! Where I come from, people who don't pay what's owed get a knee capping. It tends to work. Okay, I'll take you to him. Get out. Get in. See you there. What are you 
you tell me? Murphy thought he'd try something, bless him. You didn't know either? First, he doesn't come in for a meeting. Look, you wanted a way into Garvey. Murphy got you one through Scott. I didn't expect him to do it all by himself. Paul. Tell me the truth. Should I be worried? Maybe he thought, like we all did, that getting Carl out would be an end result. Now he's got to run an extra mile. Well, he can't do it on his own. Come on in, sit down. Make yourself at home and your friend. I thought you were dead. Rehab. Same thing. Hey, I know you. So where's the old man? They owe me. You can get your money here. Don't piss me about. Hey, I, I said I know you. Have I represented you or something? Prosecuted him, more like. Uh, Trevor, quick word, mate. <laughs> I really don't think we need any more gear tonight. You owe me from last time and the time before that. You've come here for money. You didn't have the moustache, did you? Oh, come on, where do I know you from? No, 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 I'll get it in a minute. For God's sake, Scotty. Daisy out of her misery, will you? That night we were together, you said you didn't want to know my name. You said you liked it better that way. What did he say? Don't worry, mate. We only did it five times. Come on, go. Oi! Oi, get back here! <laughs> that was serious. I'm telling you now, there's one thing I want to know. Was it really five times? You've got an order to find 20 grand. That's OK, because I know where your arsehole friends live now. So me and Mikhail can come and pick it up ourselves. I can get it. You better. Get in the car. <sighs> Fit it a bit better before Christmas. Garvey's on his way to the restaurant now. And the phone? And the phone? He's in the right-hand jacket pocket. Go. And hey, you're breaking the first rule of undercover work. New shoes. Right, here's Murphy. Looks like Callard's number's listed under Builders. Are there any texts? I'm trying to find them. Here, let me. That isn't a reservation. It's code. Johnny, uh, is my father here? I'll just check for you, Mr. Garvey. He's probably not even in town. I told you this wasn't going to work. Go tell them you're with the psychopathic Irishman who's been paid to kill you if you don't settle their debt. My dad uh, just popped in on the off chance, thought you were in the other man. John, call security, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, it's fine. Uh, can I have a quick word? I have a couple of minutes before my appointment. I'm coming with you. I don't believe you were invited, Mr... Murphy. I'm the man who's been given the delightful task of calling in your son's drug debt. How much was it? £20,000. I don't see how that would have anything to do with me. What do you do when a guest doesn't pay their bill? You take a credit card number as a guarantee against payment. That's what your baby boy has done. Except he hasn't used a credit card, he's used a name. Your name. You're his guarantee. You don't frighten me, Mr. Murphy. I have friends bigger and uglier than you. Good. Go get them. He's gonna need them.
Bon. Yes, did I leave my mobile in the restaurant? Um, I'm afraid not, Mr. Garvey. You sure? Yes, it's not here, sir. Okay. He's dialing. Yep. It's Callard. Take Garvey's mobile back to him. Who is this? It's me. Who? Someone calling himself Murphy has got hold of my son. Murphy? You know him? I think you got the wrong number. It's urgent. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Get in there. Result. It worked. Garvey's called Carlard. Then Carlard has summoned Murphy. They're meeting at the gym in half an hour. So we proved there is a link between them. And Carlard's obviously the man Garvey calls when he's in trouble. We'll need a lot more than that. Where are we? What are you doing? Hey? I can get it, mate. Just give me a bit more time. Try to get your way. Didn't work. Ah, oh, that hurts. Where are you going? Hey! Hey! Look, the lease is in mine and Richard's names. I want you out of here. Me and Richard had an understanding. Well, he's not around. And I don't understand. So, deal off. Got the cat dragged in. So you thought it would take two of you to get a woman out of her own office, did you? I'm flattered. What? You should keep out of this. Keep out of what? Alice decided that she wants to uh, take over the gym. Look, just get out. Both of you. I'm not surprised Richard left. Look at the state of you. Uh, Dave, we need to talk. Go buy yourself something nice. Cheer us all up a bit. You went to Machael. He offered me a job, I said I'd do it and I will. You work for me. Oh yeah, right. When you can be arse calling me. I've been busy. With George friggin' Garvey since when's he part of your setup? It's 20 grand and a bit extra. I need you to keep that boy out of harm's way. I don't want every arsehole dealer knocking on my door looking for a quick payout. You want me to babysit? You wanted a job, now you got one. No way. I'm seeing his old man in the morning. I want him to know that everything's nice and quiet, safe and sound. How long for? I'll bring you in minutes, right? Look after the boy. Who's that? You don't know him? Dave Callard. Turns out your dad was willing to part with some money after all. Where's Mikhail? Wait here. Are you going to tie me up again, man? Yeah. Famous in place. How are you doing? Callard and Garvey are meeting tomorrow morning. Where? Don't know. Tail them both. Registration number, Blue Ford Mondale. Somebody following you? Could be a six foot rabbit. Where are you going? For a piss? Later, sit down. You all came up? Guess who I met tonight? Daisy Blackson. Did she see you? Off her tits, couldn't remember my name. She got examined me for three days last summer and had to go quite hard on her. Lisa's worried about you. I'm doing the job. Not the job, you. Pumped up, running on empty. Go safe now. You, move it. Come on, huh? Keys up. Got the money? Hey, trust me or something. Shut up. Nice night for it. I said shut up. We said to. Give it to the man. Here. 
encore ça, Manon. Ça, là, ici. Ouais, ouais. Non, non, non. Oh, oh, hey. oh, 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 He's a personal friend of the boy's father. Then Mr. Callard will understand why this little shit needs a lesson in how to behave him. You can chop the bastard up for all I care, but I know Dave Callard. The boy ruined a kilo of the very best gear. I was looking at a profit of 15 grand. <coughs> you tell that to... You want to tell me what's going on? Look, before he went in the funny farm, he owed me big time. So I'll send him to Bradley. Do some delivery. Hand me back. I'll give him a parcel, top quality gear, 95%. By the time my client gets it, it's been cut with crap. He says it's got nothing to do with him. He's just a delivery boy. Did you tread on the parcel? So what if I did? Everyone cuts it. Not my gear, you don't. Look, Dave Callard would not want his friend hurt. They won't want bad blood. Let me talk to him, see what he says. Get up. Get up. Coming in. I'll call you back. Quiet. Murphy. I need money and cocaine, Dave. Oh, a little something for the weekend. I'm not joking. 95% pure, a kilo and 15 grand in cash. Something's gone wrong. What's happened? Scott's problems are more serious than we thought. <laughs> he wants money and cocaine. 15 grand and a kilo of Charlie. Get him to set up another meeting with Callard and Garvey. What if they don't give it to him? We'll take it out of petty cash. What did Dave Callard say? You sure you don't know him? Well, well no. I, last year, I got into a bit of trouble, and he... The hit and run. You know about that? It was in the papers. Yeah. It was an accident. The daddy bailed you out? Well, you know, it was... Dave Callard, it, it just got sorted. Murphy thinks Scott probably has met Callard before. The hit and run. Yeah. We've been trying to track down the witness. Looks like she left the country just yeah, before the fine. trial. Looks like Garvey's not as minted as we thought. His main financier is threatening to foreclose on him. Meaning? Garvey's Holland Park Hotel is a huge success. He borrows money against it, buys properties from all over the world. Banks can't get enough of him. The problem for Garvey is that other companies, wealthier hotel chains, have cottoned on to the idea and starting to squeeze him out of the market. I thought people like Sir George Garvey were impervious to such things as loans and mortgages. So do people like Sir George Garvey. All the more reason for him to be looking for a new source of revenue. Dave Callard. Who gave you permission to agree anything on my behalf? I'm happy to walk away. But if Scott doesn't come up with the money and the gear... A kilo. Bradley's taking the piss. Listen, you did the deal, you find it. Fine. I'll hand him back to Bradley and then he can continue to use his head as football practice. Put that down. You're enough trouble as it is. Go and sit over there. Just shut them up. Nice and quiet, you said. Safe and sound. Plates over there. Go and get them. Knife in the drawer, butter in the fridge. What are those? Can't be used to this. Why didn't you walk away when Bradley went for me? Don't flatter yourself, I'm getting paid for this. For some reason, Dave Carr wants you kept out of trouble. So I'm stuck with you for the foreseeable future. How would someone like your dad know Dave Carr? I know, don't get involved. What's the five-year career plan? Got to be stay out of a coffin. Thought the silver spoon guaranteed you a nice wee job in Daddy's business. <laughs> my old man's a great believer in starting at the bottom. He used to wake me up in the middle of the night to unload all this crap he was shipping in from Thailand or wherever. He'd sell it on for thousands. God knows who bought it. So you started taking the gear and he got himself a new skivvy? Yeah. He gets all arsy with me, but he's no different. 
ones. We were unloading one of the lorries and he found this little marble statue thing that wasn't meant to be there. It was buzzing. It, it was obviously worth a fortune, but he didn't declare it. A millionaire stealing knickers from Marks and Spencers? Yeah, but he sold it on. And I reckon that wasn't the last time. Morning, sir. Murphy sent me a text last night. Looks like you could be barking up the right tree. Scott reckons his father's not been entirely honest about what he's bringing into the country. Thanks. Seems he doesn't declare everything. Well, God was troubled to Pakistan, Syria, Afghanistan, the list goes on. Places that experience political and social instability. Not easier to get things out of the country. Murphy's flat, 0700. OK, what have we got? According to our wonderful surveillance, Pallard's on his way into town. And Garvey? Left his house at 6.24, arrived at Putney Boat House 7.16. Where is he now? The last we saw him, he was rowing upriver, just past the Hammersmith Bridge. So where do we think they're going to meet? Uh, sir, Callard's heading down the Fulham Palace Road. Park me. Are you following me? Get out. Where have you got photographs of Dave Callard and Carl's mother? I'm within my rights. Let's see who's been phoning. Goddard's on video surveillance. Pritchard's wearing a wire. He's on standby in the boathouse. Mr. Taylor. Hi. I'm sorry. But you're not getting paid. Cleaner on holiday? Been busy. I've never been stalked before. Well, you work for Dave Callard. It was a good job it was me and not Callard found your mate spying on him. And are you going to tell him? Depends what he found out. No. No, of course I'm not going to tell him. It's just... Wherever you show up, everything goes wrong. You think this is my fault? You supplied the guns. If you supply guns to gangsters like your brothers, they tend to use them. How have you been? I've been going out of my mind. If Richard was alive, he'd contact me. I know he would. All I've got is that gym, and Dave Callard treats it like it's his. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do? Sir uh, Locksmith, tell him I told you to call. Why are you helping me? They're not going into the boathouse. They're staying by the river. Get out there. Oh, 
No, no, no. They're walking towards the boathouse. No, they're stopping outside. Shit! Too late. We should have had someone by the river's edge. Khaled would have sniffed that a mile off. We finally got them together and then didn't hear a bloody word of it! Murphy. Meeting GNC, hotel at four. Make sure he's wearing a wire. I want to know what they're talking about. My people can't get in the gym. Seems Ellie Holloway has had a little chat with a locksmith. Maybe you could have a quiet word with her. Like you did her husband. I could make her disappear, you'd have filth swarming all over the place. Or I could just ask her nicely. I'll leave it to you. George, this is Tommy Murphy. I believe you've met. I spot a blackmail in my own foyer, if I remember rightly. If it wasn't for him, this could have been a lot worse. Ah, occupational hazard, I would have thought, bearing in mind the sort of people you spend your time with. Yeah, I'm um, just saying. And now your friend here is offering more money, technically speaking, my money, to get your neck out of the noose once again. Are you a parent, Mr. Murphy? I would have thought so. Mm -hmm. I was a very difficult young man. Waged war against everything my father stood for. So I suppose it's no surprise, really, that Scott's chosen the route in life guaranteed to cause me the most embarrassment. If you cared more about my mother, about if us... I didn't care, I wouldn't be doing this. Hmm? That's it. The bank's closed. Thanks very much for looking after my son, Mr. Murphy. Why don't you stay the night here? I'll get you a room. Why? Because, by the look of things, it might be the last time. Meeting's over, gentlemen. Where's the meet? Swan Pub, one o'clock tomorrow. I'll need everything then. Come and find me at the gym, 12 o'clock. This is Florence Green. Hello. You don't have to shout. I'm very sorry. I can read what you say. That's why I'm here. Have you done this sort of thing before? Yes, I helped Claire in the past. OK, I'll show you now. Lovely morning for it. Can't see the reply. Took a beating, but he's doing okay. I don't like him. Who? That Irish. Can't read it. I think we can guess. He sorted out Alway. Is that right? Holloway. <gasps> he's got an accent. Another 15 grand. That's another 35,000. I've got to find. If you can't find. 35,000. How the fuck can you find a million? A million? I have a good mind to walk away. Someone's on their way, I think. Who? Who? And if he doesn't get it, you don't want to find out. Say that again. Who is on his way? Me the name. It's Maz something. Um, something foreign. Mazu? Masu. Sorry, his accent is so strong. It's something like Mazu, Mazud, Mazu. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You've done really well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry about the bad language. It's the first thing I learned in sign language. Okay, let's go and get a coffee. Thank you. So he wants a million. For what? For whom? 
Let's go and see Holloway. Do you recognize this man? What does my wife think has happened to me? That depends on what kind of man she thinks you are. She knows what Callard's capable of. The sooner we secure concrete evidence against Callard, the sooner this is over. It's in your interest to start talking, Richard. And in Ellie's. It's George Garvey. How do you know? He's in the papers. Did you ever see him with Dave Callard? Richard, you know I can't let you speak to Ellie. The one thing protecting her is her ignorance of this whole situation. I need some sort of guarantee I'm going mad in here. I see you've been plundering the bookshelves. I don't know whether to buy a paper or start reading War and Peace. Twice as long as Das Kapital and only half as funny. <laughs> Murphy. How good is he? The best. Any hint of trouble will take care of Ellie. Dave Callard's not happy. You told me to do it. Yeah, I know I did, but he needs to get in there. It won't be for long. I thought you were trying to help me. I still am. No. Look, you're going to have to trust me on this. <sighs> Last man I trusted. Members of the gym. doing well. I called one woman. She's been dead a year. That's how they've been laundering Callard's money. It's all one big lie. 185,623 pounds, 22 pence. It's Richard's. He never told me we had that kind of money. I mean, how can you know someone for that long and not know that about them? Callard's up to his neck in some big deal. Just just give it a few days, a week at most. No. Please, a week, that's all. And then what? You have to trust me. There are things that I can't tell you. About what? I won't let anyone hurt you. I want to trust you. I need to trust someone. I saw Garvey with Dave Callard. When? A couple of months ago. Maybe four. Come on, Richard. Details. He was in my office at the gym. It was late. They were with another man. I hadn't seen him before. Description? Twenties, uh, Middle Eastern, Indian. Could be Greek. Anything else? It was a glimpse. Callard shut the door. God, I'd almost swear you'd had a wash. Once a month, whether I need it or not. Do you see lead him? Claire. I read your file. Very good. Very thorough. Oh, best be nice to us. Should be adding up NCS any day now. So? Well, we think that Garvey, Callard and this third man could be importing illegally obtained antiquities. No, I don't think so. 
We know that a huge amount of treasures have been looted from the Middle East, most recently Iraq. Gov has been known to do business there, and he's got the means to smuggle it out. Now, what's Collard going to do with a lorry load of antiques? Open up a stall on Portobello Road? Oh, these things are worth hundreds of thousands. Collard can make good money. Yeah, it's not exactly his style, though, is it? Unless he's laundering the proceeds for Garvey. Well, say they use fake notes to buy the artefacts and then sell them through auction to dealers. Levine. There's one other thing. Has anyone mentioned a Middle Eastern guy to you? Masoon, Masoon. No. Excuse me. I called round this morning. I was out. Ellie was giving Callard hassle and he asked me to go round and see her. And what, you thought you'd ever wash just for that? Well, I knew it was coming in here later. Can't keep your dick dry for a second, can you? I just went to see how she was. And how was she? Mm. But as you thought you'd be? It wasn't like that. What oh, wasn't it? Then maybe you'd better tell me how it was, Murph. Because you got to talk to me. Hmm? You were losing the plot. Oi! What's going on? My office. Both of you. Glad you could finally grace us with your presence. So why the tango? Well? It's personal. I need to know. No, you don't. All right, I'll tell you. He's refusing to wear a wire when he goes to pay off Michael and Bradley. He's a stubborn Irish shithead who needs a slap. It's his decision. The pub's going to be well covered. You pay off Michael and Bradley, we'll let them run, then get traffic to pick them up. Is that all it was about? Are you handling this OK? Running the extra mile? Have you ever done a marathon, sir? Your body takes over. You just run and run. Ninety-five percent. How'd you get these? No need I ask. Lit. So what was all that about with your dad? The big hug and everything? He's worried. What about? I deal with Callard? I don't know. He was on the phone most of the night. Fall night with his girlfriend? More like arranging his tarts for the next trip abroad. Where's you off to the Alamann again? Kept going on about Kandahar. So you didn't get to have your father and son chat? No. Hill. Yeah. Where the hell are you? I could ask you the same question. Swan Pub, one o'clock, that's what we said. You're the one that changed the venue to Keyside opposite the dome. What? Fuck. McHill? What's happening? Let's go. Come on. Yeah, this is leading something's up. Wait here. Any trouble and you drive away, OK? What are you going to do? Do you understand me? Yeah. Find out about a connection between Garvey and Kandahar. Change of location. Oh, 
shit. McHale and Bradley have both been shot. Go, go! Stop! Stop! And police! On your knees, hands on your head! Now! I know who you are. Well, who the hell are they? The middle market drug squad. What? A new initiative to clean up the middle classes and their weekend drug binging. They've been following McHale and Bradley for six months. Well, we've got to get him out of there without blowing his cover. What do you suggest? A wooden horse? What did the middle market drug squad do? Do you dress by gap? Do you drink chamomile tea? Showing the prisoner a photo of a meeting between Tommy Murphy, Scott Garvey, Kevin Bradley and Eddie McHill. Why is Scott Garvey being beaten up? They'd eaten at one of his dad's restaurants. They wanted their money back. Did Scott Garvey pay to kill Bradley and McHill? Come on. Can do better than that. Can you tell me what you're doing here? If I'd known you were taking photos, I'd have worn something nice. Two men have been murdered, Mr. Murphy. We know you work for Dave Callard. You had a meeting with Bradley and McHale two days ago. You were there at the scene of the crime. You tried to run away. Uh, excuse me, sir. Interview terminated at 4.36. I've been after Callard for years. Getting his right-hand man will really piss him off. What have you got on Tommy Murphy? Well, we know he had a meeting with McHill two days ago and took Scott Garvey to pay a debt. As it turns out, Garvey didn't have enough. So Murphy organised a second meeting for today. Shot them both through the head. We've been on Murphy's tail for some time. Had I known you were after McHale and Bradley, we could have shared intelligence. In fact, we had two officers at the Swan when Murphy and Scott ran out. We thought Murphy had rumbled us. What time was that? He got there at one. Why? That's where he said he was. We had him under surveillance. And the bullet that killed McHale passed through his skull into his mobile phone. His last call was logged at 1.33 p.m. That's when my officers saw him leaving the pub. What would happen if you didn't know what I just told you? What do you mean, sir? My officers were working undercover, right? No, no, no. I mean, if they saw him, there's a chance other people would have done. I thought you had the bastard. So did I. We've done some research. These are men identified by the NCIS from your description as Afghan nationals known to travel Europe. All influential, all bad. All suspects. Him. Sure? Certain. If you're right, which I'm confident you are, there's no need to look any further for the reason Callard wanted you dead. We've got the Kandahar connection. 
Mohammed Hashim Masud, suspected of money laundering, extortion, fraud, usual stuff. But he deals not in stolen artifacts. He deals almost exclusively in heroin from Afghanistan. Garvey's money. Collard's distribution network of dealers. Jesus. Have you spoken to Collard? No, not yet. So, do you think he set you up with the perfect alibi? Quite possibly. Then who do you think he got to do the hit? Probably Kaz Miller. Any word in Scott? Can't find him. Not in his flat, not in his father's hotel. Try the clubs. He's got 15 grand in a bucket with a charity. To go. I'm flattered. The gear? Could have been you and me with the bullets through our heads. Could have been you. You listen to me. Take this. Clear off somewhere. I can't. My father. Don't worry about your father. Where do I go? Find somewhere to go. Hi. I felt bad about leaving like that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're both adults. See you then. Yeah. Bye. Won't happen again. But you'd like to. Doesn't matter what I'd like. I've already potentially jeopardized any evidence Ellie might give us. Hey! I wake up in the middle of the night convinced that Callard has told Ellie that I killed Richard. And when she looks at me, I can't tell her the truth. And then when I tell her the truth... Look, you've been stuck in that shit all over a flat for months now. The thought of a warm bed and somebody's arms around you. When Ellie finds out what really happened to her husband, that we've lied to her, that I've lied to her. Anything from Khaled on the deal with Masood? Still winning on the call. Same as it ever was. If Garvey's putting in a million, that's a hell of a lot of heroin. It's a different league for Khaled. And for you, bud. I used to play a lot of football when I was younger. I was centre forward for the school team. One year we got to the cup final. I was that excited, that nervous. But part of me wished that it wouldn't happen. Somehow God would call it off or there'd be an earthquake or something. Do you want to be pulled out? Who in the right mind would want to miss a cup final? <laughs> 